Hello and welcome to Parent Quick Smarts for First Grade Unit 2. Today we'll be focusing on Part 1 of Addition and Subtraction Strategies within 20. The experiences that many of us have had in school may hinder us in answering a question such as this. Tony added 5 plus 6. He got a sum of 10. His answer is not correct. Describe how Tony can find the correct sum. Although we memorized the facts, we did not have many opportunities to understand or explain why we got that answer. Exposing students to a variety of strategies will allow them to choose the one that works best for them in a given situation. They will then be able to explain their thinking and make connections to others' work. The primary focus of this unit will be to develop fluency of doubles facts and to utilize understanding of doubles facts for additional strategies, such as doubles plus one or doubles minus one. You may be asking yourself, why do we teach so many strategies? Math facts can be thought of in multiple ways. The stronger our understanding of numbers, the more ways we can approach math facts. We want to expose students to as many ways as possible so that they may choose the strategy that works best for them in any given problem. According to research, doubles facts are the easiest facts for children, children to recall, allowing students to become more fluent in their facts. The term doubling is used in everyday language when talking about adding a quantity to itself. In other words, a doubles fact is when both parts that make up a whole are equal quantities. Students will develop fluency with these 11 doubles facts in order to apply them to strategies later in this unit. Visualizing doubling allows students to better understand the connection to the number sentence and the sum. Students can model real life examples to see this. For instance, six boys were at the park. Six girls were at the park. How many children were at the park? What do you notice about the two groups? They are the same size or, or equal, and the two equal parts are added to make the whole. We've talked a lot about addition. Now let's see how doubling can relate to subtraction. There are eight butterflies in the garden. Four butterflies fly away. How many are left in the garden? So knowing the doubles fact four plus four equals eight allows us to see that when we subtract four from eight, the difference is still four. The two add-ins here can be thought of as halves. Thinking halves simplifies finding the difference for double subtraction. After becoming fluent with doubles facts, students can relate them to finding the sums of near doubles. We also call these doubles plus one and doubles minus one. What doubles fact can you see in this picture? Do you see three plus three? Some of you may have seen four plus four. Let's see how both of these facts could help us find the correct sum. If we use the doubles three plus three, we can then add one more. So three plus three plus one is the same as six plus one, which is seven. If you thought of the double four plus four, you can then subtract one, so your process of thinking will be four plus four minus one, which is the same as eight minus one is seven. Now let's revisit our opening problem. Notice how this child was asked to describe a strategy rather than just find a sum. He correctly describes the doubles plus one strategy. Open problems like this allow students to choose strategies they are comfortable with. Support your child's learning by asking questions such as what does it mean to double a number? What strategy did you use and why? Can we find a doubles fact that is close? And how might that, how might that help us? Do we already know any facts that are close to this? 
The more exposure children have to real-life examples of doubling, the more fluent they will become at using these facts. When you go to the grocery store, do you often see items advertised as two for $10 or buy two, get one free? This is a great opportunity to talk to your child about doubling and having. Do you ever double a recipe when you're cooking or make half of a recipe? Inviting your child to cook with you will open up many opportunities for mathematics discussions. Thank you for joining us today for Parent Quick Smarts. Remember, the best way to support your child's education is to keep an effective communication with your child's teacher. Until next time, take a look at these websites, thinkcentral.com and elementarymath.mysdhc.org. See you next episode.